So today we are deep diving into maximalism and how to incorporate this style into your space. So the very first thing when it comes to maximalism is bringing in color. Yes, this is a look that is not shy on adding in color to your look. So what I love about the maximalism style when it comes to color is you can go from pretty much one extreme to another. So if you want to do, you know, a very neutral color palette as say your walls, like the items that you're actually painting, and then bring in loads of color through fabrics and layering of materials, and your finishes throughout, you can totally do that. But another really popular trick for maximalism, or not trick, sorry, another popular theme for maximalism is super dark walls. So kind of like what I have going on in here with the all black, that super um, bold, like deep greens, like forest, forest greens, I guess. I don't know if they call it that. Emerald greens, um, navy blues, like really deep contrasting tones are really, really common in this look as well. And that's what one of the things that I love about it is you can have two maximalist spaces that would fall under a maximalist style, but the color could be used totally differently. It could be added in. You could have a neutral backdrop or you could have a bold backdrop with bold colors and lots of layering on top of that. So what I love about maximalism is that from a color standpoint, yes, it's important. Add in that color, add in the vibrancy, but you can still do it in so many different ways and really create a different vibe depending on how you bring in that color, which I think is what's really great about this look is for some people, maybe painting all their walls, you know, navy blue or dark green would be way too extreme. And you could still do a neutral palette and then bring the color in, which means it's easier to change it down the line, which is what I love about maximalism is it's a lot more fluid in design where you can add in and take away and it will still feel and look like a maximalist space. And I think that's another misconception is that I do think people think maximalism is like just constantly adding in more stuff but that's not really what it's about it's about embracing your personality it's about embracing collections it's about embracing color it doesn't mean you have to go over the top but you can Another great way to bring maximalism into your space is by incorporating an art wall. What I love about an art wall or a gallery wall is it doesn't have to just be a certain item. It doesn't have to be a certain way. It's a, it can be very eclectic. It can be very streamlined. I think what's really nice about an art wall is it is an opportunity to express yourself through the way that you display it. One of the things I love about a gallery wall is that you can, you know, fill that up with eclectic frames. They don't have to all necessarily match. You can really, you can go matchy matchy. You could go not matchy matchy. You can do lots of different styles of frames. You can do lots of different types of pictures and items and really make it unique to you. However, one of the little guidelines that I do say that you should stick by when it comes to doing an art wall or a gallery wall is the spacing between the frames. So even if you have a lot of different style of frames, definitely still think about keeping that spacing in between each frame consistent. So let's say you do one inch between all the frames, do that throughout, no matter what style of frames or what style of artwork you're hanging, it will just take it and make it look a lot more tailored and a lot more, you know, well thought out. I find that's like that visual thing that if it's not spaced well, you will kind of like, it will look a little bit, I don't know, just not as well put together. So that's my little tip on that one. And what's great about the gallery wall is that you don't have to have everything in one size. You can, if that's your deal and you wanna have more of like a streamlined look, but lots of stuff, you could totally do that. But what I love about it is you can have different size frames, different style of frames, and like just create a really cool and interesting visual story. And you can go floor to ceiling, you can do like a little section, you could do it just over top of like a sofa area, you could do it going up a whole stairway, you could do some interesting um, like, you know, on a, in a corner, like two corners, like kind of like growing. I think I did that in the grand millennial one. I mentioned that. So you could totally do that. You can check out that video after this one if you want. And yeah, so there's a lot of ways that you can do an art wall or a gallery wall and it will look really, really sharp. When you're doing your maximalist space, using your passions as a starting point is a great way to bring in a really great personal vibe. 
One of the things I love about maximalism is that it's a great opportunity to embrace items that we love or items that we've collected over time. Maximalism can mean more of a lot of different things. It can mean more of your favorite colors, more of your favorite fabrics, and more of your favorite accessories. To keep your decor from looking too random, find a few common colors or patterns and repeat them throughout the room. And I think this is a really key takeaway to make it a more cohesive and well-designed maximalist space. A brief pause here. If you're enjoying the content in today's video, definitely don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. And you know, it helps the algorithm and all that fun stuff. All right, let's dive back in. So some of the items that I love to add into my space, I think as you can tell is books, <laughs> but I've also seen really great ways of displaying different unique collections, like perhaps a hat collection. It could be hung on a wall. It could be done in some cool stands. There's lots of ways to display it. Or there was this really cool one of some dice, different styles of dice. And I thought what a neat and interesting and unique thing to talk about or have a discussion point when somebody comes over or like typewriters or vintage cameras. I feel like the cameras we see quite a bit about and that's bringing in those things that are part of who you are is a really great way to bring in that passion and it, it becomes a discussion point. So when people come over, you can talk about it. One of the things that I love most about maximalism is the embracing of comfort. So bringing in pieces that are snuggly and cozy and definitely just is more designed around a comfortable vibe and not necessarily a super stylized vibe. I love that about maximalism. They embrace themes like the Higi style that I have mentioned before from Sweden, which is like that nesting style. And what I love is it combines that super comfortable feeling, but also with, you know, your favorite colors and accessories and, you know, items that you love. So it just becomes really, it becomes home. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what I, some people don't like maximalism because I think they always assume it's such an extreme, but it doesn't have to be an extreme, an extreme really maximalism is just about tailoring the space to your own personal preferences, passions, and interests. And it doesn't have to be super colorful. doesn't have to be super over the top, but it can be. And I think that's what it comes down to and having, you know, a stack of books, is awesome. Having an interesting, um, you know, gallery wall is something you can bring in having something interesting on display and you can do those things and not be too much over the top, or you can go crazy over the top. Maximalism is just about allowing your personality to shine. It doesn't mean that you can't be kind of more on the minimalist side in some ways, like maybe you don't have a lot of clutter, but you still have, you know, that display of like a personal collection or a photography collection or something. So it's definitely more embracing that personalized touch and it's focusing on the story of the space and not so much on the curated design of the space. I hope that makes sense. So that gets into the next point about maximalism and that's finding your happy place. And that's exactly what it's about. Essentially, maximalism is the perfect decorating style. If you love happy colors, happy items, palettes, patterns, the whole nine yards. I love maximalism because it's meant to be cheery. It's meant to be homey and it's meant to really bring in those, um, inviting warm color palettes and you can use like floral patterns and incorporate your decorating styles and you can mix different things. It really fits with like, if you like boho or English country or, you know, even French, um, what is it called? French country, like lots of different styles work with it, but definitely those more, um, filled with item type looks, you know, even like a rustic interior design style, which I'm doing a video on very soon, can incorporate the maximalist feel to the space. What I really love about maximalism is that you can have vintage core added into it and it just really makes it an even more interesting vibe to the space. It gives it that extra depth of a story. I did do a video on vintage design style. Definitely check that one out, but maximalism and vintage style really go hand in hand because again, you could have things that are handed down from generations that you can incorporate into the space. You could be a collector of vintage items and 
accessories, like I had mentioned, the camera collection. I have a, I don't have any, but I have an obsession with like old vintage typewriters and I definitely would love to have some. I just don't really know where I would display them, but it's definitely like one of those things that every time I see them, I'm like, man, they're so cool. They're vintage, right? They're cool, they're interesting. They're, it's a collectible item that you can really bring into this look. And when thinking about vintage, I also think about, you know, Art Deco. And I've done a video on Art Deco. You guys really like that video. And again, bringing in, you know, those Art Deco pieces, those vintage items will really work with the maximalist decor. And really, you could even say they are maximalism. And that's the interesting thing is that there are a lot of styles that follow, you know, this maximalistic look and feel and aesthetic. And yet you can then tailor it. So if you like the Hollywood glam or you like Hollywood Regency or you like more of just a vintage eclectic vibe or a boho vibe or an art deco vibe, you can really roll that in and call it maximalism. And you don't have to like hit one particular style. You can totally mix different styles together. And the biggest key when mixing styles is take maximalism styles that are very similar and mix those together and the absolute best part about maximalism is you don't need to be perfect. <laughs> I think that's probably my favorite part. I, as much as I'm a designer and I can create a curated look if needed to, I prefer my home to be a lot less refined, I guess you could say. I feel like a space just needs to feel like a home and sometimes your home isn't gonna fall into a singular look or a singular style. And I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to maximalism because it's not completely curated to one specific look and it doesn't have to be perfect and it can be a little bit messy and it can be a little bit eclectic and it can be a little bit vintage and it can be a little bit boho. And I think that's exactly why we're loving the maximalist style. If you enjoyed today's video, jump on over to my Art Deco video. I think you'll really enjoy that one as well. All right, guys, until next time, bye.